Good afternoon everyone. In today's video we're going to take a quick look at KDE Neon. Uh, this is the latest uh, 1804 release, um, just released about a week ago, following several weeks of beta releases for testing. Um, I'm not going to talk in any great detail about KDE because most people will have seen that done to death on um, on various forums over, over many months and years. This is more about what to do uh, when you have a firstly freshly installed KDE installation on your machine. Um, now specifically this refers to Neon but it would also apply to uh, most other vanilla KDE installations uh, based on anything on Ubuntu on possibly Debian as well. So um, take or leave these uh, suggestions as you wish. But the first thing I would suggest you do in all cases when you install Neon is to get rid of the horrible, dreadful menu that it ships with by default, this thing down here. Now, clearly this has taken its inspiration from uh, Windows, Windows 10, I would think at some point. Um, it's a complete waste of space. I mean, quite literally, waste of space. All this, all this spare real estate here that's encroaching on your screen. Um, you can never find anything. Um, it takes several steps to get into your your menu and then to get into the application that you want. So take that away. And as I've suggested previously in my videos, that's the first thing I think you should do when you install KDE on your system. Now there are several options. If you right click on this um, icon in the corner you've got alternatives. If you click alternatives you've got application launcher which is the standard. You've got application menu and you have the application dashboard. Use whichever you prefer. I prefer the application menu so switch to that. You then get a nice simple clean basic style menu. Everything you want is still there. You can close, you can suspend, you can reboot your favorited items you can pin to the right hand side and all of your menus just open here in a traditional hamburger style menu. Much much simpler, takes up less room and it's quicker to navigate. However there is another option. Um, Michael over at uh, Tux Digital, um, the Tux Digital channel recommended this to me. Um, one of his famous sayings is that um, KDE Plasma can be anything you want and pretty much that um, that would hold true. If we um, if we right click on our on our desktop, so that brings us up uh, this particular menu here. Now, those of you who are used to OpenBox and perhaps used to the more simpler distributions will be used to right clicking and finding an application launcher menu to use. Well, you can do that on on KDE. So uh, to do that, just right click, go into Configure Desktop, go into Mouse Actions. Now you'll see here you've got three options, your right button, middle button and your vertical scroll and you'll see which of these um, parameters are assigned to uh, along the, the right hand side. Now what I would suggest here is you can do the middle or the or the right button, whichever you prefer I think on this, but I would just select the right button action and I would instead of doing the standard menu which is this, I would change that to application launcher. Now if you apply that, okay, and now when we right click we have an open box style menu. So how cool is that? Nice and quick, everything is there, got your icons on there, just like in open box. Now if that's all you desire you can come down here, you can go into panel options, configure panel, and if you hover your mouse over the standard default menu options you'll see the little red box and if you tick that it will remove the menu from the the bar um, so if you can manage without that take it away and just use your right click menu um, for many that will be perfectly sufficient and it's one less piece of software that's installed on your system taking up resources Okay, on to number two. Number two on the list is compositor settings. Now by default, um, as I've said before, KDE um, has lots of whiz-bang effects enabled, particularly these um, kind of glide off and on windows that come up on the system here. So your menus will glide up and down if you launch things like 
your file manager and you close them you've got this fade off and on effect i don't particularly like it i think it makes the system feel sluggish and slow so you can take that away so system settings um so open your system settings come down to compositor which you will find under display and monitor compositor and just take this down to zero this does not disable compositing some people have suggested it does it does not all it does is make the animations much faster um, uh, to in the way that they respond so just apply and now you'll see when you open and close things they just kind of click up onto the screen nice and fast so there we are that's number two okay third one um, very much down to personal preference but I think there is too much too much vast open expanse of bright white on KDE as standard so I would always go in and enable the dark theme now the dark theme on most Linux distributions is pretty nasty there are glitches there are icons missing there are misplaced icons that don't quite fit with the theme KDE is quite different the KDE breeze dark theme um, leads the way and has been excellent for uh for a long time now so if we go back into our settings we're going to workspace theme here um and just choose breeze dark and apply and as you'll see much nicer um you don't get those um misplaced icons that are kind of neither white light nor dark that don't seem to fit um everything does fit nicely on the breeze dark theme and if we open up our file manager all looks fine and dandy so there we go okay that was number three right uh, number four now this is particularly useful if you are running a nvidia drivers so if you are running an nvidia graphics card i highly recommend you carry out the following step now you can install your driver manually however if you open the terminal so actually we can do it by just i keep forgetting this has got kwin so we can oh sorry K runner, you can just type uh, con for console. There we go. How about that? Don't really need a menu at all, do you, with that? Um, and what we want to do is uh, sudo apt install now kubuntu hyphen driver hyphen manager. And what this will in, will install is the standard uh, driver manager software that's used in the Kubuntu distribution, and it's in um, it's in the repo for anything based on any of the canonical distributions. You'll also find, I think, in the Debian repos as well. Um, don't hold me to that, but I think I uh, don't see any reason why it wouldn't be in there. Um, anyway, password. Off it goes, and there we are now. What that will do, if we go back to our settings and we come down to the bottom, you will see it has installed a driver manager option. Now, if we click this, now this will take some time. Um, what this is actually doing is it's reading the hardware installed on your system and it's also reading the drivers also installed on your system and looking for anything that's missing or anything that needs a driver. Now, typically what you'll find on this, whether or not you are using um, an NVIDIA driver, is that uh, things like the Intel microcode may well flash up on here if it detects that your system uh, is not currently using that when um, when it is an option. So those things will pop up. Now, now you'll see here, this is detected that I'm using uh, an NVIDIA GeForce GT 1030, and it's giving me the options here. Now, I installed the driver using this method before starting the video um, had I not done so then I would still get these two options but the using xorg x server option would have been ticked and I could have the option then to go in and select from the list here the Nvidia driver just click apply and it will go away and it will properly install the Nvidia driver without you having to mess around with terminal and uh, in the terminal with um, Linux kernel headers and all the rest of that um, paraphernalia so that's a tip i highly recommend you install that um fits in nicely and it's great that it, it actually puts it into the um, into the system settings here uh, once you've installed it so moving swiftly on number five 
ensuring that you have the correct GTK theming installed for your GTK applications. Now, to do this, you go back into settings again, um, application style, and we want to go down to GNOME application style GTK. Now in here, you want to ensure that when you run a GTK based application, that it looks as close as possible to the native Qt applications running on KDE. So in here, what I would always suggest is that you select the GTK2 theme to match your Qt theme, which in this case we've got Breeze Dark enabled. So I would go down and change these and make sure that they say Breeze Dark. And in this case, because we're running a dark theme, I would tick dark theme for to be preferred in the case of any GTK3 application. Now your icons as well. Um, cursor theme is fine, it's already set to Breeze. Icon theme, now again, I would come down here because we're running a dark theme. I would change this to breeze dark. But the fallback theme. Uh, this is where it cannot find uh, an item. For example, it can't find uh, a menu uh, uh, icon, or it can't find something that's used in one of the drop-down menus within a GTK application. It needs a fallback. It needs to find something it can put in the place. Now, I would probably in here set um, kind of one of the standard fallback themes that comes on pretty much every Linux distribution. So I'd probably put in here something like high color because that's going to be available and there's bound to be an icon um, uh, available to, to kind of plug the hole, so to speak. So click apply and, uh, and that's done. So now when you open your GTK applications, they should look and feel just like your QT applications. KDE has always done a, a great job really with integrating GTK into the Qt desktop environment. Um, so make the most of it and make sure your settings are correct. Now, the vexed question of double click. Now, some people will prefer the single click option that comes as standard within KDE. Uh, most people, particularly if you're migrating away from Windows or Mac, um, will find this an absolute mare to get along with. So uh, it doesn't help that KDE keep moving where they place this. But again, now system settings. Now this time we want to go into desktop behavior. And that's as far as you need to go now, because in desktop behavior, you will see click behavior. Single click is enabled by default. If like me, you like to double click, just change that and click apply. And you have a sane option set as your default. Nice and easy. OK, now NVIDIA settings. Now I've covered this off before, but um, when you install your NVIDIA driver, you automatically install NVIDIA settings and it will come up in your system option on your menu and if you come along here you'll see nvidia x server settings they should open this um, on some distributions you need to do this as root on uh, on ubuntu based uh, distributions this doesn't appear to be the case and it will update your x server nvidia file regardless of whether you, you have root privilege so come into here go into your where are we now Come into your X server display configuration and make click on advanced and make sure that false full composition pipeline is selected. And that will 99 times out of 100 um, remove any uh, glitching on the uh, on, on the system, any screen tearing that you might otherwise experience on the system. So very important to do that. Uh, having selected it, Click apply and then once you've clicked apply, what you want to do is save to X configuration file. Now, when you do this for the first time, there'll be nothing in this box. Don't worry about that. Just go ahead and save. It will prompt you for your pseudo password um, and it will create the X11 uh, Xorg config file for you with the correct settings. If you change it subsequently, just save it and it will update that file. But again, it always asks you for your 
sudo password. Now the other thing to bear in mind on this as well is to make sure that uh, flipping uh, is not enabled um, because that can interfere with a number of um, a number of applications, uh, particularly the one I'm using here, which is a simple screen recorder. Anything that records your screen, you may experience glitching if you have flipping enabled. So you want to come in and you want to change the settings there. So to do this, we go into our open GL settings, which is this option here, and make sure that allow flipping is not ticked. OK, having done so, just quit and it'll ask you, do you really wish to? Yes, we do. And on to the next one. Right. Um, the last one that I've got on my list here, number number eight, is to disable uh, background services uh, which you do not require to be running. So again, back into settings. There we go. And this time we want to go into uh, startup and shutdown. You want to go into background services and down the bottom here you will see a list of everything that is initialized when you boot into your system now this is a desktop system um i don't have any bluetooth um bluetooth uh, hardware attached to this machine or using services on this machine so i can untick bluetooth i can also untick print manager i don't have any printers attached to this system and i don't have a touchpad on this system because i'm using a keyboard and mouse so i can remove those um, and then click apply now not the end of the world if you forget to do that but it's things running on your system which you probably don't need to have there there may be other things in here as well so i don't use for example mostly because i haven't really uh, investigated it very much I don't use the Plasma Vault module, so you could probably go in and disengage that as well, um, along with perhaps a few others here. Um, but highly recommended that you that you do that. Okay, so that's what I would uh, recommend as your first steps on a fresh install of Neon or a vanilla install of KDE on anything on a Ubuntu or particularly Debian base. Some of these of course will apply to other distributions because some of them are just the kind of basic settings within the OS so to speak and don't really touch the the base beneath but certainly some things like the um, Kubuntu driver manager will um, will only apply if you're on a, on a Ubuntu uh, base. I hope you found that useful. Um, any suggestions you have for first time suggested defaults to apply to uh, KDE please place them in the comments below and uh, I will see you again in the next video bye for now